All right, we're back with another episode of the Digital Brands Podcast, where we interview influencers, entrepreneurs, and entertainers online who have digital brands. Today's episode, we got my guy, Mr. Brown. First Happy name, video. Courtney. Owner of Tetris Concierge, yes, man. Me, me and Courtney, man, we've been tapping in the last two days. We've been riding around Atlanta, man, vibing, networking, enjoying oh, yeah. the city. Oh, yeah. Riding around real exotic, you know what I'm saying? The way we should be riding. The right, way we should be, man. So me, me and Courtney been riding around. Courtney um, is an exotic car renter and a also economy car renter, man. So I, we got to yep. dive a little bit deeper in it. I've been get, able to get to know you the last couple of months. Absolutely, man. And uh, yesterday, yesterday and putting today. That's putting the light, getting to know. Facts, facts, yeah, facts, facts. Foundation of what's going on here in San Antonio, moving to uh, Atlanta, man. So okay, yeah, putting it. Getting to know is uh, putting it putting it lightly, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we look we looking forward to seeing what you got going on in, in both regions, right? Absolutely. Um, what I what I love about your your business model is being able to help stimulate the economy too. You know, with yeah. how we originally talked and talked about you know making some passive income and um, how you wanted to provide a resource for gig workers. And yeah. help people that were, you know, looking for vehicles and may not have the credit, may not have the cash. And we got into a lot of good info. And I'm like, yo, I can't wait to dive into that part. But yes, before sir. before we hear the glory, first thing first is I gotta know the story. Oh, so we can't help. get in, we can't get into all of the, the good stuff until a little bit later on man. in the pod, man. But right now, I wanna know more about you, you bro, Courtney, like who you are, where you from, what do you do? And then, of course, how you provide value. Nice, man. Yes. Once, once again, happy to be here, man. Super, super blessed. I've seen the people that sit, sat in these chairs, these very same chairs. So definitely mm -hmm. honored to be here. Yes, sir. Um, when people ask me who I am, I always tell them first, I'm a child of God, and I'm a husband, and I'm a father. Those are the, like the most important three. And then to get to what people really want to know, right? Um, military child. Both my parents are from Georgia, about Austin, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I was raised with that Southern respect that a lot of people just write off as military strictness. They're like, I've been saying, my whole family says, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, mm -hmm. yes, sir, no, sir. So that didn't come from the military, but I grew up in the military. I was born in El Paso, Texas. Got a little sister. Mm -hmm. um, both my parents stay in San Antonio, where I'm at now. Uh, growing up, we moved every three years was never a problem in our eyes. The parents did a good job about that. It actually felt cool to have friends all over the world. Mm. Um, did sports in high school, dabbled with it in college. But I guess what's real important is just like, what I like people to know about me is my, like I don't quit. Like, mm. We ain't quitting nothing over here. Everything we try, I will try it. Mm. Especially it's gonna get me to my goals. And um, that just kind of comes from my father. Like. My father taught me some things, some great in business, some not, but he taught me never to trust anybody or never to depend on anybody or put yourself in a situation you got to depend on somebody. As we both know in business, that's the exact opposite. You got to you gotta delegate. And mm. then he also told me just to never give up. You start something, you finish it. If you're not going to finish it, just own up and own why you're not. Like, Don't make an excuse. Just like, I didn't mm. finish this because I started too late or... I don't like doing it no more. Just own it. No, never make an excuse about it. So just that accountability and then just wanting to be like the best. You know, I wasn't the best at a lot of things, but I showed try to everything I do. Mm -hmm. Be the best. And I just continue that to my day. So I just, that's what I tell people about myself. Just hard worker. I love the laugh, love humor, especially mm -hmm. you get me out of my box. I play some jokes. Mm -hmm. um, but right now in my life, I just love being like my new dad. Seven week old mm. little girl. Congratulations on Thank that. You. Um, Congratulations on that. New, new, new pops. It's your first, first. Yeah, second. I have a fourteen year old son. Okay. Um. Yeah. He's, he's, he's way past the baby stage. So this is still brand new to me. Mm. Um. Raising the infant to newborn. It's, and then you got a little girl too. You bought the shotgun yet? Oh, I, I got. <laughs> we been, we been had rifles and uh firearms. <laughs> we. I live in Texas, man. We <laughs> you live in Texas. Uh, yeah, look, we live. Is that a um is a right to carry state? What yes. is it called? It's right yeah, to carry. Open carry. Stand your ground. It's a stand your ground stand state. Stand your grounds. You rob my house, I'll shoot you. 
Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. Oh man, Te Texas is an interesting place, man. I've been to um, Houston. I've never been to San Antonio. Yeah. Tell 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 us something about San Antonio that people should know. Like, what's something that we should know about San Antonio? Man, that's a great question. So, a little foundation on it. I was in Houston before I moved to San Antonio. Okay. And I moved to Houston. My job schedule was work one day off too. Mm -hmm. So my whole plan was to just go go to the fire academy, mm -hmm. get out the academy, move back to Houston, and I'll commute back and forth. But that was 12 years ago. I'm still okay. in San Antonio. So San Antonio is like it's like living in a big city without the big city feel. Like We don't have this traffic y'all got in Atlanta. Okay. We don't even got the traffic in, a, in Houston. There's... Um, we talked about this the other day, like living in Houston, you got to dress up to go everywhere, like fresh. <laughs> San Antonio, like I, I can wear them same, my same outfit from day drinking all the way to the club at night yeah. if I want to. Nobody bad an eye. And, and honestly, nobody really cares. Yeah. It's just um, it's a friendly town. Lots of tourists come every week because of Air Force graduations. But for the most part, it's a friendly town. The food is good. It's um it's not too big, like widespread. Uh, it's one of the largest populated cities in the nation, but as far as this footprint, not too big. Get anywhere in the city, 30, 45 minutes, an hour on a bad day. Mm. And it just grew on me, man. Like the cost of living's great. Oh shit. <laughs> Especially okay. compared to my salary. Like I live I live in a house. Like I live okay. live good. I'm not not house poor, not car poor. Yeah. Um the same place I live in now, if I stayed there in Houston. Like I'd have to downsize, mm. but the cost of living is pretty good there. Okay. And then on top of that, the community loves the, they love my profession. So that just makes it easy to just be there. Okay. Like touch touch on your profession. We, I know, I know we were chopping up in the car, but tell us more yeah. about what you do as um, your profession, right? You say people of the city love it. Well, what, what, yeah. do, what, what do you do for people to love? I'm a, I'm a firefighter. <laughs> the okay. citizens love firefighters, man. It's, it's like happy to not be a cop. Like <laughs> <laughs> they bring snacks to the stations, cookies. They just come. They take care of you. They come say thank you. It's just. It's just a. It's just nice to be around. Okay. Um, in my job now, I'm, I'm going going towards the medical side. If I stick around, yeah. We'll talk about that later. But for the first ten years, I did uh, fire suppression, and I did it on a team we call the technical rescue team, and that just means. In addition to fire and EMS calls, mm. we had other calls that were what we call low volume, high risk. So like water rescues, high angle rescues, okay. um, ex advanced extrication or extended extrication, building collapse, confined space, um, cave rescues, had a little bit of all those. So in essence, like that's, that comes to me, like always wanting to do my best. Um, my perception of the technical rescue team was these are the best firefighters in the city. Like mm. they got all the extra skills. So I'm gonna join that team, and so I joined it. And I stayed around for a long time. That's hard. I, I love that. I, I absolutely love my job. That's hard. But we'll get into it. I love my family and my mm. free time more. Mm. But with my job, you can't have all three. Mm. You can't have all three, um, and still experience the world the way I want to experience mm. and help the way I want to help. Mm. So it's. Mm. I had to move on to different ventures. I had to learn about, thank the Lord, I, he guided me towards entrepreneurship because I tried I tried day trading. <laughs> <laughs> I tried working in real estate. I tried just extra side gig jobs, throwing bags for Delta, yeah. um, saving techniques. Like, I'm trying, how can I get this extra wealth? You tried, you basically, yeah. you, you dabbled into a bunch of different things. It's like, okay, cool, I have my security. Yep. I have a nice house, I got my car, I got, you know, uh, my family. But at the same time, I want to do some exponential things. You start looking into the other things. But exactly. what really tied into something that you said, you talked about not quitting, having that mindset, which was your pops taught you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Ex explain to us, explain to the people how hard, because I don't think a lot of people understand how hard the exam is or, or getting into the firefighter, it, being a firefighter is like, 
Like, was it hard? Did you have to study? Was it a breeze for you? And then if you did have to study, what what did you have to study? And like, what did you have to do to be able to pass that exam to become a firefighter? All right, so, man, I wish, I wish, this is, this is the question I wish people ask other firefighters, because for me, I was blessed, like, oh, okay. blessed, you call it luck, whatever, like, when I took my entrance exam, over 4,000 people took it, only 35 of us made the class. Um, I had veteran points, and I, sco- I scored really well on it, I was ranked number 15 out of all 4,000 plus people, so, um, the reason I say that's blessed because if I'd have just missed, like without my five points, I wouldn't have been in the class. That's how tight the race mm. is. Mm. Like everybody can have a 93, the person with the 94 is out. So it's with Eesh. that many people compete for one spot, the margin of error is super slim. So I also say I'm blessed is because I didn't study. I also say I'm blessed <laughs> because this is a true story. I can't even put this on, on the internet. <laughs> but the day I went down for my entrance exam, I thought I went early so I can get a good seat. I got there like an hour and a half early. The line was still wrapped around the building. So already I was like upset. Like, uh, I like to be like the first five in the building for yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then um, on top of that, it started raining while we were in line outside. And then the kicker that almost broke me, my iPhone 4S got delivered to my doorstep back in Houston while I was in line. And um, I don't remember back in the day, iPhone wasn't on Sprint, those first four phones. So I could never have an iPhone. And I finally was able to get one. I'm also the guy that watched tracking numbers. I meet the <laughs> guy at the door no matter what I order. So now, now I got this package delivered to my front door in an apartment complex. And I ain't going to be home for another day. So you are you in San Antonio at the time? I'm in San Antonio. Hey, getting crew. rained on, looking at checking the phone of my dreams at the time been delivered like I could literally right now go home play with my phone be happy <laughs> and live my life in Houston I, yeah. I like to think I'd have still been all right but I stayed I took the test I remember taking the test I was like man test is it's kind of simple I think everybody got a freaking hundred on that damn yeah. test man so I was I didn't even really sweat it a couple months later my parents come to Houston we go to the breakfast club you, you check the test scores rank number 15 I guess I better finish the hiring process. And then another reason I got lucky, there's um this is where a lot of people fall out is the CPAT exam. It's just a physical exam. But I had I I wasn't too far removed from running track for college. Mm. So I was in, I was still in great shape. I'm like 26 mm. years old at the time. So the CPAC exam was easy, but the day I took it the first time, I straight up had the flu. And uh, they say I was just moving slow. Took it the second time, passed with flying colors. They're like, why'd you fail the first time? I was like, I told y'all I was sick. Like, I told y'all I don't feel good. Who, who are you telling? You telling your, the, the other proctors. firefighters? Yeah, the people are already fired. They're proctoring. Oh, okay. And, and that's how that's how the entrance exam is. Like, it's so, like, just imagine 3,000 people passed, and they will X you off the list for being five minutes late. Any reason, they'll just go to the next person. So I just, I did my best shot, and I failed it the first time. And then I failed the lie detector test the first time. You got to take a lie detector test to be <laughs> a firefighter? Yep. I failed what that kind of the, questions are they asking you, man? Just your simple stuff like, do you do any of that stupid stuff during your childhood? Um, one of the questions that stands out is the, um, the how you treat minors. Like, have you ever been convicted for like mm. sexual assault towards minors or mm. anything of the nature? Those are disqualifications. Mm. You have a DUI or tickets you're hiding. It's just normal stuff. Oh, just normal stuff. Normal okay. stuff you really want to know. You want to know. Yeah. Okay. So I failed that the first time. So I took, passed the exam where some people take that exam 10 years in a row before they rank high enough. So I passed the exam and scored high enough for my first time. Failed two of the tests twice. I had to do the fire academy twice because I failed the national registry for the EMS side. It's just over too much stuff for me. And it really just come from bad study habits from playing sports from mm-hmm. middle school through summer college. But um, I had to do a lot of things twice. It's like there was a lot of chances where the Lord was going to be like, hey, this ain't for you. He didn't kick me out, but he sold me through it. <laughs> so, and that's why I did it so long. I was like, man, people, people put their neck out for me, spoke up for me. So I always did my job to the best of my ability every shift. And it showed. I have... I like to say I have a decent reputation in the fire department when it comes to my work ethic and willingness to do the job. 
But part of that comes for the people that like, I was like, hey, I know we have these rules, but let's just give this guy another chance. I didn't mm. ask for those things. I'm, I'm curious. How does that work? How does that work? Is it like a a, a, um, a frat house or dorm room? Like, how do y'all how do y'all coexist? Because I, from my understanding, firefighter, you have this really funky work schedule. Could you elaborate yeah. a little bit more on that? Yeah, I, I wouldn't call it funky. It's just different. Okay. Um, 24 on, 48 off on the fire side, 24 on, 72 hours off on the EMS side. So okay. you just have lifestyle changes like, you're either going to celebrate holidays the day before, the day of, or the day after, um, depending on your schedule. Because let's just go Christmas. Mm. You either work Christmas Eve, get off Christmas morning, or you work Christmas Day, or if you're lucky, you work the day after Christmas. But there's not like there's not like that gap where you just get the week off unless you already got seniority and you request that vacation. But it's easy to adapt to for the firefighters. For family members, that's the challenge. That's where... Like dad, dad or mom's not coming home tonight. Like y'all are like families of four turned families of three. Uh, wives with two kids, like like they're doing everything. Now. Like once every three nights, they're doing everything. And it, it, mm. it can't take a wear without communication and planning. Mm. But um it's it's very doable and it's at the same time it's forgiving. You trade shifts, you take one day off, you're off five days in a row. So you ain't really got to take your vacation like that to like go do stuff. Because you can get five days off and you can slide. Do you ever do that when you getting your days off? You ever go up to travel or what? Yeah, yeah. I, I was taking multiple. My my thing was three domestic, two international trips a year. And I did that for like my first seven or eight years in the fire department. So I, you got to understand, like I never thought that I'd be making as much money as I did. Like I was, with overtime, I was over six figures. Um, knowing what I know now, mm. really not that big a deal. I mean, I, I no, no, it disrespect. is. It's, it's no, a let's big say deal. it is. It is because it's <laughs> like for the people who want to know, right? Because I have a homie who who's from Chicago. He's he told me he's a firefighter for like fifteen years, and he got into the internet space and he quit his job. He starts having programs. He made made yeah. money, but how much can a firefighter make for real? And because if I'm at home, I it's not necessarily about the money for me. If I'm at home, I'm watching it. But I know I can be a viable member of my community. I know I could help others, but I also want to make a decent income. And I'm thinking about becoming a firefighter. Let me know right now, how much money can I for real make if it, I want to become a firefighter? It depends on the department. A lot of departments, it's not, it's not great, especially in higher cities where, or higher cost of living areas. San Antonio, on the other hand, um, coming out of the academy, you're between 65 and 70, mm. whether you have a degree or not. And then overtime opportunities all, all the time. Um, our overtime is 24 hours at a time. So 24 hours a time and a half, those are like, you work two overtimes per check, you, you got an extra almost two grand on your check. So it's easy to get six figures, but you got you to put in the time. So it's not uncommon for guys to work like 48 off 24 during like the slow vacation period of the year and then like trade time and take off spending money on vacation. So you can make the, the, the salary to have a good, decent living, mm-hmm. but um, you also at the, you're at the mercy of the regular real world stuff that uh, we've had to deal with. Like mm-hmm. we've been, we went a long time without raises because of contract negotiations. Mm-hmm. Um, cost of living is going like, not, not not houses necessarily, but gas, mm-hmm. food and stuff. Mm-hmm. Wives are having to get part time jobs and stuff like that. So you you just feel all that stuff. These are all reasons to make sure you're you're your own boss. Because no matter how good the job is, like I'm still at the mercy of my health and the higher ups. Like makes sense. If I break my leg, I can't do my job. Mm. The higher ups decide, oh, we don't need this many people in EMS today. We're gonna put you back over here. I, I have to go. You gotta if go. I did, if I was like, if I was a slave to the money and the benefits, mm-hmm. um, like that's that's what that's a lot of people get stuck in their places. They're like, well, what I'm gonna do? Like, I ain't gonna go nowhere making no more money. And these benefits, they're parallel mm-hmm. to mini- military benefits, but I, I'm not I'm not tied to any of those. Like, I will still have an all right salary, and I will have the same benefits without the fire department, which I established that. Once I realized I wanted to do entrepreneurship, I built that foundation. Like, 
I need to separate myself from this. So when I do have a baby and I want to take off two and a half months, I'm going to take off two and a half months. Like you're not going to threaten mm. me with a, not a check or, or anything really. Cause it's not that I don't care. It's just that what I'm doing at home is a lot more valuable mm. than what you, what you are capable of offering me. And it sounds mean, but it's just no, it's not. reality. It's I reality. Mean. How has or has it lit a fire or intensified your your burning desire or your obsession for entrepreneurship and to be successful because you have had a kid, or is it just always been in? That's just Courtney. It's always been. I've always known I wanted like. Let's just call it what it is. More. Mm. I didn't know really why. I just knew that like I had this. Other people have more. Mm. Well, I want more too. So growing up, like I was taught, I want more. I need to work hard. I, I'd work every day. I've worked eight shifts in a row in the fire department because I was nobody. I wasn't gonna let nobody outwork me ever. I thought that was the key to success. That was the key to wealth. Just work hard and work harder. Find a job that pays more. Work hard to be the best, and that gets you a good reputation and maybe a little security. But at the end of the day, it, we both know that's not enough. Hundred percent. It's not enough. It's too. It's just too risky, man. Especially with these days. Um, I got like I got two kids now, and a fourteen-year-old boy that plays sports. Like, yeah. he gonna break something. Yeah. <laughs> so if I, if he I got don't, prom coming up. He gonna yeah. need a car soon. He gonna need a car soon. Yeah. He went size thirteen shoe. Oh man. Man, that. That shoe game is a little is, sensitive for is me. He, is he into um like he is he because he lives in San Antonio, so he said oh, he lives in Houston with his he lives in Houston. Mom, oh, he he get you got to get him some drip. You got to get him. You got to go shop with um oh boy who out in Houston. It's a couple brands out in Houston that, that's that's fire. Houston mm-hmm. be dressing. Yeah, out there. we talked about that in Houston. Yeah. You got to step out. Yeah, you even at his out. age, he got to look fresh at school. Keep his hair cut. Um. It, you got me thinking. So, Houston, here's the thing. Tell me how much you know about this. So, <clears throat> it's this thing with with uh, us, with blacks, when it comes to a wave of going to certain cities that have motion, right? Yeah. We come to Atlanta because Atlanta got motion. We go to L.A. We go to D.C. We go to Houston, right? Yeah, Houston. We go to Houston. That's another city that that says, you know, it's a lot of motion there. Now, I've heard some friends that go to Houston and say Houston's a little bit overrated, especially when it comes to like the travel and how, how much you got to get around. What would you say to that? Being being that is that one of the cities for motion because you you in Atlanta, but you could have easily went back to Houston. Yeah, and we, we talked about that. So Houston, it comes in waves. Uh, when I first got to Houston, oh five, like Houston, it was. Fun. You go downtown, you can just walk, have fun. You ain't got to go in places. And then the wave left, went somewhere else. I don't know where it went. <laughs> 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 Next thing you know, like, there's only one good place to go to or one good bar to go to. Uh, and next thing you know, you ain't going out at all. You ain't, you, they've always taken trips to Austin. <laughs> so, Austin. So Austin they is like came. a wild card. Austin's a wild card. If school's in. It just depends on your people tolerance. Um, you just don't realize how, and no disrespect to college kids, but I'm a, they reckless, bro. <laughs> college kids are reckless. <laughs> is it, is it, uh, they are reckless. you know, every generation we give, like these college kids, is it college kids? Is it, are you talking about San Antonio, Houston, or just overall? Overall. Okay. When school's in town, mm-hmm. even in San Antonio or in Austin mm-hmm. or in U of H, the surrounding area just, just struggle. They, they got to fight a little hard to keep sanity and, and order. Mm-hmm. But you got 18, 19 year olds on their own. It's to be expected, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing against, it's probably will be that way forever. Yeah, that's but, how we um, always going to be. But that's that's to my point. That's how Austin is. Because Austin is, they got UT Austin. That's a giant school. So mm-hmm. 6th Street ain't but so big. You got tourists going, all the students going, mm-hmm. the athletes from the campus, and then you got kids from surrounding colleges coming. So it gets packed. Back when I was like 20, 19 years old, mm-hmm. I could tolerate that stuff. These days, I'm like, 
That's when you know you're getting old, man. I ain't even going to Austin. You're getting, you're getting old, man. <laughs> but when I start, I knew I was getting old when I started hearing cars outside and I was getting annoyed. And they, so outside of the building right here, right? So I go on the balcony and then sometimes they'll block off this whole street and it, it'll be like a little, the, all the chargers, scat packs, and they just be cover the road noise. and they make the donuts. And I'm getting annoyed. <clears throat> and I'm like, damn, am I getting old? Because I'm... <laughs> I like. I remember that was me with my Camaro riding around doing a, doing donuts, Same acting thing. a fool. I'm like, damn, I'm getting old. But that's a whole nother whole nother story. Whole nother yeah, story. Man. But a hey, quick question. I'm getting back on back on Houston, right? Because I don't know too many famous people out of San Antonio. Who am I missing? What's some famous people out of San Antonio? Because I just know Houston people. Got more famous food than anything. Got more um, famous food in San Antonio. I mean, I could give you some athletes. Priest Holmes came out of San Antonio. Um. And then the Spurs players, I, that's kind of what I like about San Antonio. Mm. Like, I really just know like starstruck people that I know of. Okay. They're, um, we got some country singers that live in the higher, okay. higher, okay. higher, higher, higher up area okay. of San Antonio. Okay. But like, it ain't nothing like here. Like, right. I've been okay. here two days. And <laughs> yeah, we was just, we was just, we was at Prime and we it's saw, uh, you know, some people just as soon as we walked in Prime. But I, I want to give you a did you know? Go for it. So, I was hearing from a guy named Carl, Craw Carl Crawford. He's in Houston. And he managed Megan Thee Stallion. And Megan Thee Stallion is like famously known for being a Houston hottie. She was hottie. born in San Antonio. She is from San Antonio. So, you yep. knew that. I didn't know that. My wife's huge Megan Thee Stallion fan. Like, is, she having hot, is your wife having hot girl summers? Yeah, <laughs> my wife. My wife way too chill. Her hot girl summer, she'll tell you yes, but her hot girl summer, like she's super family oriented. Like, okay. Like fun for her, it's fun for me too. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to her mom's house and hanging out all day. Um, I, I, I moved when I was 18. Like I do not want to ever go back to my parents' house okay. for hours. Okay. So that's okay. where we're different. But I do have a good time over there. I've learned to just embrace that family environment. But she's, no, nah, she's not like a Megan Thee Stallion hot girl summer. Oh, okay. okay. She's like, she like a mom hot girl summer. Yeah, even before she had her first child, she's like, she, she'll chill and watch some anime. She loves to cook mm. and then see her family. Okay. That's pretty much what it come down to. We yeah. go out every now and then, but she get tired when I get tired. We'll <laughs> be ready to go 10, 30, 11 o'clock. <laughs> I know, that's key. It's like, yo, baby, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Ready I've been to go. waiting on you to say something. Yep. Nah, man. Uh, how important it is? How important is it to have the right woman uh, in this pursuing this entrepreneurship journey, or or is um, it just you know? No, I think we all know the que answer to that question. It's super important. Um, me and Jeremiah talked about this earlier, actually, we're making content. I think it, it goes. I think it's a three head three headed dog or dragon, whatever you want to call it. You got to have the right spouse. You got to have the right circle. And then the third is you got to be willing to cut ties with one or two, with one or both of those if if it's not right. Because mm. um, once you learn about the cost of opportunity, you ain't got time to be like, if my wife would have told me I couldn't come to Atlanta, knowing what, I've only been here two days, like this opportunity I would have to pass up because mm. she just didn't feel like letting me go. Mm. Like if I never knew the cost of opportunity, then I might have just been like, oh man, but... I know, I know the cost of opportunity. I know the potential of what we're building here. It's like you, you like you gonna cost me my dreams. Yeah. Um, lucky for me, I have a wife that supports me every single step of the way. I'm I'm halfway across the country with yeah. an eight week eight week old baby. Yeah. When she was like eight months pregnant, I came to the mastermind mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Maybe many people don't know that because I didn't know nobody there, so I wasn't just advertising it. I was checking on my wife, making sure she didn't have no baby every two seconds. Yeah. Um, That's huge, man. I drive to Houston all the time for other mastermind events I go to with my other coach. I was driving to Austin every Tuesday, every Tuesday and Thursday night. I miss this night. With the Mitch, I got mentorship meetings. Monday mm. night, I got ads meetings. Mm. Wednesday morning, I got mindset coaching meetings. Um, and in between that, I'm working on the business in between naps. 
mm. at the same time doing my husband duties. Like I don't neglect mm. my husband duties. They just got to get done on schedule and time. And we have to maintain when she does a great job. Like I'll be at a meeting or something. She'll bring me my dinner or my breakfast quietly and not disturb me. When it's time for me to go somewhere, she'll pack them there, pack the car for me. Mm. Make sure I'm good. Like I got a great, great, oh, perfect wife. Okay. Like, and it, I couldn't imagine like, I hear about these boys, like, nah, man, my, my, one of my homeboys, he gonna kill me for telling, I ain't gonna mention his name. But like, we're building our, like, we buying all this stuff. We started a podcast too. I was like, hey, man, this, I, saw, I told him, I was like, I buy my stuff on sale throughout the year. I knew I need a lot of equipment, so yeah. I'm taking this year, every sale, I'm buying a couple pieces. Yeah. So that's what I did. And it came time for us to like, use double the equipment. I was like, bro, you gotta get your stuff now. He's like, my wife said I can't buy XYZ. I'm like, what you mean? <laughs> and if you notice I have not said nothing to you about the podcast that was like in January so I was yeah. like well like I said you gotta be willing to cut those ties I, I wouldn't cut ties with this particular friend because he's like my brother but when it came down to like dedicating my time to go to Houston to shoot podcast episodes mm -hmm. all that time went that went to that went to cars mm. see you speaking you speaking to what people need to hear um and this goes back to something I heard you, you touch on briefly, and it was about how you purchased a, a, a course back in the day on multifamily. Can you elaborate a little bit more yes, on that? Yes, man. That's that's one of my, my pressure points right there. My butt I is heard you. I was like, man, I, but I didn't hear the whole story. Yeah. Can, can you give me, give me, break it down for me? So this is how I figured out I had the Jesus syndrome. And entrepreneurship, it's not a good thing. <laughs> but um, I'm starting... I've tried all my other ventures and I've discovered entrepreneurship and like, I'm like, well, obviously I need to do entrepreneurship and obviously I need to be in real estate The two seem to go hand in hand when it comes to wealth. So I purchased a, I purchased two courses actually. I okay. spent like two grand on courses through bigger pockets and um, I still got my whole, I'm talking to all the people I still talk to friends and family. So I, and I hope, don't sue me bigger pockets, but it's just true, true story. I'm speaking mm. true. <laughs> when I realized, because each each week they'll give us new content, like mm. videos to watch, mm. um, along with documents, mm. PDFs, and it was like straight up step by step instructions. The one I zoned in on was how to get your first multifamily home, mm. and it, it, it was easy. Mm. Like this is this is one of those things where it's not hard. You just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, great, I'm going to put all this stuff in a shared iCloud folder, organize it lesson by lesson, pair up the video with the documents, name the video so there's no confusion. And I got at least about 35, 45 people. It's like, y'all, today's y'all's lucky day. This is the first day of the rest of our lives. We're about to be rich. <laughs> we all about to be real estate moguls. Here are the instructions I bought. Just follow them. I followed them. I ended up with a duplex. Not one person followed through. Broke my, well, I was so mad. <laughs> like, families, sister, friends. I'm like, bro, like, what are you talking about? It must be nice. Couldn't be me. Like, it's, this is exactly what I did. <laughs> and I, it's here for free. But then I learned a hard lesson. Like, you're not going to be able to bring everybody with you on this entrepreneurship journey. It really is a, a mental challenge. Like, Steps are easy, but there's just something about the way we're programmed all the way through school to just be a different type of person. And I'll elaborate on that later. But what, what what did that teach you about human nature? Because I, like, what did it teach you? What did you learn? Humans are gonna do what they're familiar with, the easiest way they know. Mm. Um, they ain't gonna change. Like, definitely not gonna take steps back on purpose to get ahead. Um, that's just the majority of people. Um, I had to learn that the hard way. I was like, hey, man, like, you say you, so with me, I was like, man, I really want to start buying equipment, but every time I drive to Houston, it's like $300. Every time I do this, I stand by Six Flags. It's not the cheapest. Yeah. <laughs> I drove me a, a Ram 1500, the one I wanted, mm. gas guzzler. I had, I love tech. Piece of tech come out, I'm buying it that day. Or I, I don't pre-ordered it. Like, I was getting what I wanted. yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why I thank my wife too, because when we got together, we was taking the trips, yeah. living on the nice side of town, driving yeah. the nice cars, yeah. doing pretty much going and doing whatever we want. 
that I knew what I thought I wanted at the time. But um, I had to get rid of all that stuff. I sold my truck, mm-hmm. got a Santa Fe, which I love now, but I did not want that car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moved out of that um, expensive as apartment, got a duplex. Didn't want to be a landlord. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to be in a in the old duplex built in 86 on top of that. Like I made sacrifices. But to me, they were easy to do because like these are steps towards the goal. Like mm. when it came time for like my peers and family, I was like, yeah, just stop doing this. And like you can you can do XYZ. Mm. Like, like, Dad, you do got time to go look at houses. You watch you watch the news for two hours. Mm. <laughs> like just take one of those hours and do some research. And it, it was just a long list. I could I could go down the whole list. It, it's just excuses, but I, how how has uh how has your social social circle changed oh, since man. your pursuit of excellence or pursuit of personal growth? How has this mindset? Because you talked about the mindset and a, a switch had to flip in your mind. It's got right? a, it's a flip. It's a switch, and it does flip. At least it did for me because. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a no brainer, these mm-hmm. decisions I make. Like, mm-hmm. Cause I got my goal. I got it broken down all the way to the day mm-hmm. for what I need to accomplish. And if um if something comes up, I'm gonna ask my wife, she, like this. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember we first talked about this? So he's like, nah, we'll well, I was like, I can't go. I'm gonna send a car. Let's just bring the car to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Uh what, fifteen minutes later I called you back because like we we come in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> my wife and I sat down, and she asked me one question: "Does it, which one's gonna help you get towards your goal?" Yeah, and it was a no-brainer. Yeah, so for me, that switch does happen. And, um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people don't flip that switch. I, I, I don't try to complain because the Lord knows what He's doing. Mm-hmm. But it just hurts when it's like, like I had awesome. an entourage, yeah. <laughs> I had a crew, but now my I'm so grateful for my new circles, my new. WhatsApp groups, like all mm. these people are where I'm trying to go and do what I'm trying to do. And like every day is just better. Like mm. we'll get into what yeah. what brought me down here okay. and just how better like things are going for me. So you what what as going and transitioning there, what got got you down here? You know, that Santa Fe is one of the reasons you're down here. Yeah, the Santa Fe, the Santa, Santa Fe, Fe is the foundation. Shout out to that Santa Fe. <laughs> but um the lady didn't want to give it back, man. <laughs> Shout out to the Santa Fe, <laughs> Santa Fe out there working because you making you made a good cash flow, yeah. passive stream of income with that Santa Fe, yeah. right? Well, you were eighteen hundred dollars a month, eighteen hundred dollars a month for a Santa. People pay that for, I don't know, whatever cars how, cost fifteen hundred dollars a month for. How 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 are you making eighteen hundred dollars a month on the Santa Fe? Four four fifty a week. Simple as that. Four fifty a week. <laughs> four fifty a week. Lady kept it for almost three months. Okay. Straight. My car note and insurance all together seven hundred dollars. So eleven hundred dollars was going straight back to the business. So I've never paid myself out of the business. How how did this process happen? Like what is it like? Uh what's your what's your flow? So you're marketing your Santa Fe. Yeah. And you have like a website or like what's the process? Like Santa Fe days? Yeah. All I knew is, so I got the foundation of the Santa Fe days mm-hmm. because I, f- I flopped on my real estate ventures. Working in real estate, mm-hmm. not investing in real estate, there's a difference. Okay. For all y'all out there, there's, working in real estate is not investing in real estate. It's not the same. Okay. But I was working, thinking I was investing. I had some principles and laws that were out of order when it comes to business, specifically the law of sequence. I did things out of order, flopped. Then um, so I'm still reading my mindset books, and I mm. pretty much came to the conclusion or the epiphany that it does not matter the product. As long as you know sales and marketing, you can do whatever you want to do. You can do what you want to do, sell what you want to do, or not do what you want to do, and monetize it through sales and marketing. Mm. So I was like, I like cars, like, like I. I love cars. Mm. I, we built them growing up. My dad and I, we built mm. classic Impalas. Um, I bought an Audi A4 when I got, it was one of my first nice cars. I bought myself when I got my fire department oh. job. I had the Audi A7. He just brought back memories. Boy, that, I yeah. love that car. Man. Audi smooth, man. <laughs> I, love, I've been, I, 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 I fixed my friend's cars, fixed my sister's car. I bought my first car when I was uh, 14. It was $200, right. didn't run. So I, 
point is, I love cars. So yeah, I was yeah. like, let me figure out how I can get me a Lamborghini and not pay for it. I heard that somewhere yeah. on, on Instagram or something. <laughs> so I was like, seeing it down my timeline. One of these course yeah, guys. Well, so I know I heard it. So <laughs> I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And my friend, one, one of the homies that's still with us, um, he told me about um, CEO Matty J's course mm. and then also Push's course. And I don't kill me for this, but they gave me their username and passwords. <laughs> So I was I was going through the courses and I was like, this makes sense. Mm. This could work. But I'm already a year, despite the failure in uh, real estate, I was still working on my mindset that year. Mm. And I had just realized that like failure is the key to success. Like, I read it a thousand times, but mm. like that same moment in my life, I realized like how true that is. Failure like, is failure the key, the key, to, key to success. Key to success. Yeah, you, you're not gonna get to this level without failing. No matter how many mentorships you have or coaches, mm. you can just minimize um, errors, but you're gonna fail somewhere. Mm. And when you fail, you just gotta own it, learn from it, and level up. And now you know what not to do. Like if there's a hundred things to do something wrong, and every time you did something wrong, now now there's 99. Do something wrong again, now you only got 98. Eventually, you're gonna be down to two options, right or wrong. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fact. So that's uh, a fact. I had learned that. So I was, uh, I come to grips with my real estate um, failure. I was like, well, I got the courses, but like, I need to talk to the person. And that's why I, I got into Mitch's low level course. Um, it was just like the Patreon group. Mm. And um, that's a great group, but they weren't. The work. Those are some good, some great people in that group. They were just at a different level in there, a different mm. stage of the entrepreneurship journey gotcha. than I was. So some you, of them you already still had, had the Jesus syndrome. Yeah. Some of them believed they weren't gonna fail, and like, I just don't associate like okay. that. So I was like, I need to get, I need because I know his system works. I need to get mm. closer. So I came to Atlanta. Yeah, I came to Atlanta. And man, that was like. Before before we touch on the Atlanta thing, I'm curious. I want to go back to these courses. Yeah. Because you got two courses. They were. They you had. CEO Matty J course, you have push man course. Yep. Um, can you compare the two and which one would you say gave you the most value? But I think they both was equal value because mm. being a tech guy, and I love like when it comes to this profile, I'm a DC. So I love like organization, it's just straight facts. Mm. CEO Matty J's course came with like the spreadsheet. All the affiliates I needed to get labeled, I just had to go fill in the names and like go out there and do the work. And I love that. And Pushman Mitch had a bunch of videos, just this is how you do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you had the best of a world. You had the analytical, yes. then you had the action of the. Yes. That, 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 that. And I was still had cold feet though with the, because I'm like, now my Santa Fe's, that's like, that's my family car. And I was, and I didn't, I wasn't in position to buy a cash car, to try. Like I just, I was just confident it was gonna work. But I need, just needed that extra thing, and that's when Atlanta came in. Oh, I still ain't done with the courses. Yeah, that's, I got one more question about these it. courses. It, if push come to sub, and you down to your last thousand dollars, and you need to that. buy a course, and you had CEO Matty J course in front of you, you had Push Man Mitch course in front of you man that's who courses hard. you go buy with that last thousand dollars thinking about them courses with 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 that version of knowledge that i had at that time or mm -hmm. what i know now with that version of knowledge that you had at the time oh man i just have to go over the facts what happened like i, I dove into i dove deeper into push man okay so if i had a choice ca matt ceo maddie j or push man Mm. And um, I just feel like, so you don't know what you don't know. Mm. But I, I I did know Push was getting in front of people saying, this is what you need to do. Did you do this? Kick him out the Zoom. I love that about him. Like, yeah, like, yeah get people out of here. They ain't doing homework. <laughs> let's, let's keep this shit rolling. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, so that was, I, I would, that's close though, because those, those mm. sheets, those checklists, I'm all about a good checklist, man. 
and that organization of those charts, like, I don't know if I, I don't know how fast I would have got to that if it wasn't for that course, mm. like that level of organization mm. of affiliates, mechanics, salesmen, mm. concierge mm. people, mm. hotels. I don't know if I'd have got to that okay. level of organization okay. as fast as I did. I just want to but set I, the internet on fire real quick. Yeah, I, I <laughs> say it's gonna be on fire today because I, <laughs> I do know for a fact that it was it was Push's course that like you know what, fuck it, I'm making an ad for the Santa Fe. Okay. okay. And uh, I just I went all in. I'm a fucking I'm a black in. club member. Okay. <laughs> so so knowing what you know now, let's see what sauce you got, man. How does one create a fleet? I'm interested in car rentals. I, I see Tetris Concierge coming down my timeline. I want to get a fleet of cars. What would you recommend? I would recommend first you need to set it. You got to set a goal. Like, because your goal could, might not even need a fleet of cars. Mm. If your goal is to just take your family to Disney mm. once a year and you don't want to pay for it, you just really just need one to two cars and just save the money. But if your goal is like ours is to just like change school systems and the way like I really want to create a new trend the way super wealthy treat their money like especially when it comes to education mm -hmm. like my my goal require a fleet because I can, honestly there's no fleet big enough to help me get the goals I want but I can get a fleet large enough to invest into the ventures I need to okay. to get the return I need so if your Makes goal sense. let's say your goal is in the middle you need a fleet like okay. you, you need thirty cars. Um, and depending on where your goal is on the timeline, that'd be the second step. Would you want these yesterday, or are you you taking your time because of personal things? If you're like me, you wanted them yesterday. So mm -hmm. joint venture, um, joint venture is the fastest way. What is yeah. a joint venture? Joint Explain venture it. Is to me. Somebody already owns the car, and they're gonna let you rent it out, and you guys split the revenue. Um, different ways to split the revenue different ways they split the responsibilities, but that's what it is at its core. Mm -hmm. You renting out somebody else's car and giving them enough money to make them feel happy about it, at the same time keeping enough money for you to run a business. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot lower revenue than owning your own, but I was, able to, I was able to joint venture five new car, or five cars faster than I was able to save for one car with my Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. So it just made the most sense. Is that the same as a broker? Is a JV and broker the same thing? No, because uh, they're, they're similar. Mm. And I don't do brokers, so I may be mis misspeaking on it. But broker is like uh, um, another entity that rents out cars. Like, mm. let's say you rent okay. out cars. Okay, and okay. You, you got a car that you don't move. Like, hey, I got somebody that wants that car. You charge 1000 I'm I'm going to charge them 1200 and that's, that's brokering the deal. Got you. Okay. So JV is you going out. You bringing the bringing car to your you. fleet. Yeah. Got you. Okay. That's the best way I can explain okay. it. Do, do you leverage credit? And if so, uh, how so? I leverage other people's credit. Um, I, was, I, I don't because I can't right now. I'm, I'm building my credit up to be leveraged. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to meet my goals yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I, I started that path. And it's a slower path than I would like, so I, I reached out to other people with great credit, and yeah. then it's based off of you got good character relationships, so they yeah. know who you are. They see me the, working this okay. thing by now, like I'm a few months in. They see I ain't doing nothing else. Like I, about five or four months ago, I text all the important people in the different areas of my family, let them know like I'm not doing nothing, but focusing on my business for the next six months. Mm. I've been staying true to that. No spring mm. break, mm. barely selling. Didn't celebrate my wife's birthday. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day was real quick. Mother's Day was just real quick. Father's Day about to be real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm skipping Tuesday dinners. Mm -hmm. I'm um, I'm not watching TV no more. I ain't mm -hmm. played my PlayStation since December. Um, I'm locked in, like, cause I know the consequences. I know the cost of opportunity. And um, the biggest thing, and I will go on to the next question. With this, but the biggest thing, like, I the people I'm trying to help. In my mind, like if I take a day off, that person that needs the help I'm trying to provide might not make it that next day. So like, mm. who, who am I to be like, you know, I'm gonna do this next week. Like the person, the end result 
that person at the end result may not have that extra weight. Like these, these kids, like I'll go into my ultimate goal later. That's like a, that's a thing. That's like a real mm. thing. But these kids, they need, they need the help. And, and I, I can't, I, who am I to make them wait four more days because I want to go somewhere Friday through Monday just to kick it. Yeah. Nah, that's not, that's not, not, not in these last six months or four months. Like it ain't gonna happen until I get my goal. So. Ain't feel that. Me. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. That's big. That's big. And in your the people that you are helping the most right now with your your business model of JV, is it people looking for economy cars, gig work, like courier, courier services? Like it's yeah. different courier services out there. Um, That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's a two sided entity. Um, the people that rent the cars. They rent these cars for work. I got this model from from Push. Mm-hmm. Um, probably another reason I go with his because he he had a niche that I knew worked in San Antonio because mm-hmm. DoorDash is like through the roof in San Antonio. We get new tours weekly. And they DoorDash, they Uber. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had the market there for that niche. And um, but these people they work hard, man. They they work real hard. They work 10, 12 hours a day. When they car go down, they. These people make sixteen, fourteen hundred dollars a week. They car go down a week. That's a quarter of their income gone with no end in sight. So I, I love providing cars to those people because they continue to work. I know they're I know they're working hard because we check their history. Um, the people that work hard take it serious. They take care of your car. It's just a better relationship. On the flip side, with joint venture. I didn't even see this coming. The people I've helped out the most are people that bought cars maybe one to two years ago mm. and are upside down in those cars but can't afford the payment. So now they can't, they can't nobody buy a private or a business because they're too far upside down. And it's either let it get repossessed, ruin your credit, which a lot of people, we know the belief that most of the world has about credit and it getting ruined in seven years to recover. So yeah. people are really scared of that. Yeah. So like they've been reaching out through me, like not even through my joint venture ads, like, hey man, I got a proposal for you. <laughs> I'm like, actually that's half my business. Of course, yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. it. I'll but, take it. I'll take but, it. But yeah, like they like they straight up tell me, like, man, you sent from heaven. Like, thank you for renting mm-hmm. out our car, getting it since little six, eight hundred dollars a month to pay the bill now. Pay the bill. Mm. And those are those are my my proudest joint venture ones. Okay, because you have all the SOPs down, you have the systems, you have the quality assurance checks to make sure that you're getting the right type of people on these people cars, right? Yep. So, That's, yeah, man, yeah, you, you know, I talk forever about this stuff. Okay. It's all about knowing your your customer avatar. Okay. Like this, like I know my customer avatar for car, car rentals is AJ. AJ is about 31, 32, makes between 40 to 50 thousand dollars a year, needs a second job, has one family car, but his wife needs the car for the kids. So although he can drive Uber, he can only do like a couple hours during school hours, which is when it's slow. And he would like another car. I got it, got it laid out. I only advertise to AJ. To AJ. Yeah. Like I was taught by one of my business coaches when you create ads, you put it up there. It's like, if, is, is this only for AJ? If it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Yeah. Take it down, change it. So yeah. that's what I do. I, I only market to AJ. People hit me up, I just need a car for three days. Well, yo, you might want to try Hertz or Avis. Because mm. <laughs> I don't do three-day rentals. I only rent to gig economy workers that need my cars to make money. Mm. AJ's. AJ's. That's it. And that's hard to do at the beginning, turn down leads. Like, yeah. you know, I could give them to three days, you know, get, make a couple get 250, you yeah. know? Yeah. But it's just more beneficial if you just stay true to your character. And then on the other side, my, it's funny, my dream customer is not even the one. It's not the person that struggles with their car note. It's just the, it was, it's more of a person that's looking for passive income. Mm-hmm. But it just it naturally changed. I, I got it wrong. I got that dream yeah. client wrong. because We got to create the is, avatar. We got to create the avatar for who that is. We got to figure out what his name, what his name is going to be, who he is, what he yep. does, what he, what where he, he hangs where out, where he hangs out at, where he follows on social media. Mm. Where, does he read? Does he even get on social media? Like, if AJ didn't get on social media, I'd be wasting my money 
advertising on social media, but I know AJ is addicted to Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> He's on them all the time, just like a lot of the world. So that's where my ads go. Mm. Like I know, I know a lot about AJ. <laughs> okay. And so you meet, you meeting a lot of people in the gig world economy and because you're essentially providing them their income back. Are these people looking at you almost like a therapist, like just chopping it up with you, telling you? And they, they, I just had to switch to a business line off my personal line because these people, they text me all day, every day. Because part of what I do is I tell them like better times to drive. Hey, this, it's Fiesta this week. If you can get out between 12 and 1, rates should be surging. Because mm. in my mind, if I help them maximize their profits, they will always have the money to keep my car. So but they love it. And this is another thing. We're going to get into this. Because of you, mm. I only have five cars that are not including my, my personal. Mm. I, was, I, was, I was about to take off. Like, you know, my goal was to have 30 cars by December. Uh, and my plan was working. I started yeah. with it. My, my business plan was yeah. to the day. I told you I got it down to the day. I was on track to meet my goal. Then somebody had to tell me about a book. It's easier to 10X than 2X. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then, like, just reading that book, I remember reading it. I listened to it. And I was like, let me go buy the hard copy. Or the hard copy. And like, I went three pages in to reading the hard copy. I was like, why, why did I decide that I'm only worth $1,800 a month? Like, I can take these same 24 hours that somebody else has and be $1,400 a day. I could be a thousand dollars an hour with the same effort. Like it's like it's time to change. And my trip here was to talk me out of it. <laughs> like I came up here to dot, dot all my eyes and cross all my T's. So I'm uprooting my family for for that concept and that another flip in my in my mind. Like I'm glad I'm helping these people and I will continue to. And it's perfect time. Lord works in mysterious ways because. I just finished my systems, my workflows. Mm -hmm. All I gotta do is take, I'm gonna give it to my sister. So all you gotta do is pick up the cars and deliver them. Mm -hmm. New joint ventures are gonna come in automatically. Mm -hmm. New renters are gonna come automatically. They're coming right here on this program. One, two, when they fill up, that means they got a booking. They look at the booking, pick up a car, drop off a car. If it's joint venture, pick up a car. If it's renter, pick it up and drop it off. That's all you gotta do. And I was like, Muffin, when it when it gets to thirteen cars, you need to go hire an intern to do this for you, mm -hmm. and then start paying him when you get to seventeen cars. And you should be there by this day. But I got it all down there for us, so I'm able to keep that business alive. I still help those people, but at the same time, get to my ultimate goal. Like, like what happens? What happened during this trip put me ahead like four years. I'm glad. I wasn't going to be buying exotics and luxuries mm. for a long time. Now, now you got access to multi, a multi-million dollar fleet. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, wow. Like, seeing that, that we now... Got, I'm about to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Man. I'm about to kill it. Man. Yeah. So, okay. So, all right. So, somebody, let's say they, they watching this in... They want to tap in with you, like, but they want to know how can they extract the most money or most value out of their time? Like, what advice would you give somebody who's about to 2X? What advice would you give them to help them 10X? Somebody sitting yeah. at home watching this, what would you say to them? In whatever realm, it can be cars, if you want to touch on cars, yeah, it, it can be anything. So uh, the way it works in my mind, like you said, no matter what the realm is, even that damn tequila bottle. Mm -hmm. Shout out to shout out to shout yeah. out to my sponsors, Class yeah. A eleven eleven man coming how, through. How much is a bottle of that? This is uh fifty dollars. Okay. This is sixty. This is fifty. What's the most expensive bottle of tequila you know? Like uh, what is it? Um, Louis the Thirteenth. They like for one shot. I think the bottle was four thousand for the okay. bottle. So you just gotta look at yourself. Why am I worth 50 and he's worth 4,000? 4, like he- Cause he, he said it. He's, he's fucking said it. <laughs> he <just laughs> he that, said that's it. it. He decided 
I'm going to be worth 4000 I'm going to be worth 4000 It's just the decision. Is you going to get tomorrow when I wake up? We got the same 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I can go for my $40 bottle or I can go to make myself a $4,000 bottle. And that's just really what it comes down to. Like, and I, I learned it the last couple of days. Like, that's the beauty of business. It's all, it's all the same. Mm-hmm. Every business is sales, marketing, accounting, operations, mm-hmm. leadership. It's all the same. Mm-hmm. So why would I, like, why? Why am I doing this at the $450 a week level? Knowing, like, now I know. Like, mm-hmm. Going back to the people I want to help. They're looking at me in the future like, it would be nice if you get to us about five years earlier. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was like, it was a big decision there. Like, I said, I got it. I mean, realistically, you got a lot of sauce. You know, system-wise, you know, yeah. back end, you know how to do that. Like, a person tapping in with you could essentially have a, a a business, fully operational business in a month, you know, yeah. uh, less, than, less that, than that, right? Yeah. So um, I 100% get it, is you, <clears throat> I paid to be in some crazy rooms. I paid to go to masterminds, I paid to be yeah. in, and I, I paid to be in those rooms because not necessarily what I was gonna extract from the room, but I know who was in the room, right? Exactly. I paid 10,000, 15,000 to be in a row. I've done yacht masterminds. I did 25,000. Like, and I'm like, people will be like, yo, you spending this much money? My first to- one was, uh, my first one was 7,000. My second one was 50. Oh. But because of that, I, I, I know a guy that makes $10 million a month. Yeah. Like, text him. He yeah. helps me. Like, I, I had to learn to ask. Cause like, my, going back to my dad taught me never depend on other people. Like, yeah. I can figure it out. But like you said, you pay to get in these rooms and it's the value of like-minded individuals bringing their knowledge and experience together. It saves you so much time. And if you can save time, going back to what I said earlier, who are you to take the longer route? Mm-hmm. Like, this could all end. Like, I might not make it downstairs. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, you, if you're really trying to help people, you really believe that's your, your thing to do, you gotta, you gotta act. You gotta get in those rooms. Like I, I, I can have the car I want. Like I can afford the payment for a car I really want. But mm-hmm. here I am in my plug-in hybrid Santa Fe. Yeah, because I want to help these, help these people. It makes I'm, sense. I'm gonna talk about that end goal before we end. But okay, well, what what are what are some ways you touched on them? But what are some ways to make money with my vehicle outside of? Um, just renting the car. Like, do you know any other other ways that I can? Because I don't let's say I don't trust somebody driving my whip. What's some other ways I can make money? That's the beauty of car rentals that I've learned is there's a, a bunch of ways. Take what goes go down to people I know. I got one family member that wants me to that lets me rent out their car, but don't want to put miles on it. Say, well, you're just this this car is just for chauffeuring. Short trips here to that San Antonio ain't that big. Mm. Like you're talking. 20 miles a trip max. Perfect. Meets, falls, checks her boxes. You got somebody that has classic cars. Don't want nobody touching it, period. Okay, that's that's perfect for photo shoots and video shoots. They can at least sit in it, right? You sit in it, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Um, you got people, well, I don't care what they do with the car. I just need the money. That's perfect for Uber, unlimited miles, blah, blah, blah. You, um, you got people that want to drive cars like for chauffeuring, Mm -hmm. but need the nice car, Mm -hmm. pair those people up. You got people that only want their cars going on weekends. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yours is a two day minimum weekender. Stay in the city limits. Um, There's, there's, there's options. You just have to straight up have that emotional attachment that we were trained to have on uh, liabilities. Well, I don't consider cars liabilities no more because systems, but, Back then, it was a liability, you know. Well, well, growing up, like that's my car. I don't muffin my sister. You better not drive it. Mm-hmm. Mom, don't drive it. That's my mm-hmm. car. Mm-hmm. But really, all it did was just cost me money. But um, it's just that emotional attachment that's what stops people. There's, to me, there's no real reason not to rent out your car to pay for another one. <laughs> it's, it don't make sense to me. Like, take the emotional attachment. Take it's just a car. 
just a car. It, you coming from somebody like I cleaned my rusty Honda Civic like it was a Rolls Royce in high school. Yeah. So I I, I used to you cherish my cars. I you built them. I was that person. Like I used the same air freshener, Armor All, spray wax, vacuum, shampoo, whole <laughs> nine yards. I took care of like I took really good care of my cars. Man. That's just your all around personality. Like you, uh, is that OCD? Where you like yeah, super clean? You say, I got a, I got a court like that court is, but I've been looking at it for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a slot in the bag. It's like it's got to be neat. Down. Okay. The funny thing is, downside to that is like when I lose stuff. It's lost for a long time because everything has a place. Like, mm. If my thing's not here, I have no idea where it's at. Like, okay. No idea where it's supposed to, where it should be or could be. Like I, I set my wallet here every night. Like, why, why, why wouldn't it be, why here? Wouldn't it be here? <laughs> why wouldn't it be here? Did you check the Is couch? It? Like, I don't need to check the couch. I know it ain't there. Like, I don't need to check the couch. So car. you're at the fire department <laughs> and some because do y'all have like your own lockers or something? So like I was blessed enough to be at a station where we had our own rooms. You got your own room. And so if some missing or something, you know ain't something ain't right. Like, yo, I know I put everything in the right place. Oh, yeah. Like, you do that first thing you walk in. Just gear-wise, set my gear the same way every shift. Mm. You get, that's, that's how I get in it the fastest and correctly, more importantly. But, yeah, if, like, if somebody, like, scooted the truck in and out, like, I, they'll try to put my boots back right, but I know. The toes, the toes ain't, toes ain't forty five. <laughs> oh, you got to, you know. I like, oh yeah, I've been messing with my boots. Yeah, That's, I got it down. Like, I, I keep my hood laid face down, opening, and then the bottom flap already up. So I, yeah. just, I got jump right on. Like, I've been doing it. I did it for ten years in a row. So like, you learn. But it's the same thing at the house. Everything's got to have a place. Um, how was the? How was the? Um, the quality of the fire station, because I was seeing a news article, I don't know if you saw this, but it was talking about the Houston fire departments being like raggedy and they having holes in, in the walls and oh. it was like plywood and it was like they got some Houston fire department, they got awarded like 600 million of eight years of back pay uh, for Houston yeah. fire department and they're getting paid less than surrounding cities. Am I, am I off with this? Nope. It's, okay. uh, it, San Antonio's turned into one of those cities. We get paid less than our surrounding cities. Some of them, a lot of guys come to our department, get mm -hmm. the certs, then they bounce. Just straight up, they bounce. Because our we're one of the few, only a few uh, academies pay you and guarantee you a job while you're in the fire academy. And ours is one of them. So they get all these certs, EMT, fire suppression, one, everything they need, hazmat if they go that route. And then they go somewhere that pays more. You can't blame them. <laughs> it pays more, better equipment, yeah. better shift. So that's how it is. But the quality of life, that's station by station. And that's crew by crew. Mm -hmm. One crew can have holes in the wall, dirt everywhere, and they're comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. This is our house. Don't clean up our dirt. <laughs> 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 and another crew could be like, man, we like everything, spick and span, and there's everything in between. There's 54 stations, three shifts per All station, right. so there's everything in between. That's that's just the that's just a crew crew by crew thing. Um, but ultimately, if you ain't happy where you're at, you can just find another crew in the station. So everybody's pretty much where they want to be. At least I was. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not. It's nothing like TV. Yeah, because I'm like, yo, y'all the fire, y'all the fire department, man, like. Y'all saving lives, and it seemed like every time I, we talk about TV, is it is it true with the stigma that the fire department and the police department be beefing? Yeah, is that like just uh, a, a TV thing? Not in San Antonio. I can't speak for other cities. Mm -hmm. I wasn't raised around first responders and nothing like mm -hmm. that. But in San Antonio, we just like, I feel sorry for the cops, honestly, because you naturally build prejudice and like judgment. Mm -hmm. like when you keep getting the same call from the same type of people, and it'll call 899,000, it, it's different. Mm. Now everybody's watching that person and they're like, and then like they, they like they struggle too with like finances and like hiring. So like the, our candidates are getting less and less qualified. Lord bless them, they still wanna do the job. But the reality mm. is like candidates are less qualified, less willing to do the job. And it's the same on fire too. But uh, police just, they, they just get, you know how it is. Anything bad with police, they it's blown up. And I'm I'm a 
I, I love our people. I defend them to the end, you know? <laughs> like, if we wrong, we wrong, though. Like, I've, I've seen it. Like, I've seen, like, black folks do something straight up wrong. Yeah. And when the cops come, like, straight lie. And the news comes, straight lie. I'll be like, that is not what happened. I just saw you. <laughs> yeah, I just saw you. Like, you hit this person. You you rushed that cop. Like, what are you talking about? You were not talking nice. Like they probably believe their own lies too. Yeah, it, that's another thing. A lot of it's mental health. Oh yeah, true. But it's it's that's why you just gotta love yourself and love the people around you and just try to do good because it's it's too much to worry about it all and let it bother you. Like I can only control what happens with me, my patients, right here, right now. I can do my best. Uh, the next guy may may not like I can't I don't let that bother me. Is it is it like a do your best? Where is it? You focus on you getting one percent better, or do you think of do you think of it like as a competitive sport or a competition? Like where well, it's always a competition. Always a competition. <laughs> it's always okay. in my life. But um, it just like you mature. I went from always a competition and everything to just like. Well, I now I just want us to be better. So if yeah. I had a learning lesson in my interaction, you just bring it up in the truck on the way back. Like, hey, like, did y'all notice this? I probably should have said this. Mm. And, or somebody else will say it. And you hear somebody else say it, you learn from it. You may remember it, you may not. But mm. just like, you don't want to be out there blatantly causing extra problems. Like enough problems happen yeah. on their own organically. <laughs> no, so, 100%. Makes sense. Yeah, so you just can't. You, just, you get called to that call, focus on that call. Can't save them all. Mm. But you can save a lot. You can help a lot. So just, just focus. Mm. Do the best that you can in your scope of work. Do the job. You know that's kind of how I. That's kind of how I stay sane. Like I uh, don't let the deaths bother me. Mm. I remember some more than others, obviously. Yeah. But I sleep at night still. Good. Especially now that like, like my dream job is now like my anchor that I don't want like that. That, that cement tied to your shoe, but I'm I'm letting it go. Like I'm I'm taking I'm trying to take my leave of absence. If they don't give me leave of absence, I'm gonna quit. Cause this is mm. my goal. I missed by twenty times. My end goal is the most important thing mm. for uh for my life right now. So okay, all right. So um before we conclude, man, I I have a very very serious question for you, man. You know. Yep. You live in Texas, and you talk. We talked about competition, and um, I don't know if you know this, but the Drake and Kendrick beef, right? It's, so listen, Drake. You just was, made my wife's day. Hey, listen, Drake was discovered by Jay Prince. Jay Prince lives in Houston, mm -hmm. so technically, without Jay Prince, there is no Drake. So let me know, being that you used to live in Houston and you live in San Antonio now, who is San Antonio and Houston rooting for in this Drake and this Kendrick Lamar beef? Yeah, you're going to hate this answer. I don't know. I haven't even heard. I've heard like half of one song. I told you, bro, I'm locked in. You locked in. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, let me, let me listen. Let me, I wonder. I don't know, bro. I don't, you don't know? I haven't even heard like, well, we should, we should call my wife. She know. She woke me up one call, morning. Call wifey, man. She was like, Kendrick dropped back to back. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm finna go do some work. I, I don't care. <laughs> Let me call her on speakerphone. She, call, call her. She gonna be happy to tell you, man. Call her real quick, because we need to see what's going on, man. Hopefully she not feeding amazing. Let's see. Hello. Hey, hey, babe, you on the uh, podcast, this is your subject. They just asked me, like, who's San Antonio Green for in the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef? I told them I didn't know. I haven't even heard all the songs. So they, they want your input. <laughs> I, I, I can't take it. You going for it. Which one is that one? Kendrick? Uh -huh. Who? 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 Yeah, Kendrick was better. Kendrick winning? Yes. Oh, see, why if you know if will you please put Courtney on this this battle? He missing all the all the good 
back and forth competitiveness going on in this arena. The memes. The memes. Yeah. Babe, what I be doing when you be talking to me about this stuff? What I either get done doing or about to do? Pick up the baby. Work. <laughs> Man, please, please, Miss Brown, can you please put Courtney on? The I might Drake try to listen to it on my flight. I don't even. Li I listen to my books on the airplane, so I ain't gonna see a lot of you, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jacoby, go by the coolest nerd. So the coolest just, nerd. Just take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> hey, nerd, nerds are in now. <laughs> yeah, I told him you was the subject matter expert for this. So how many songs does each one have out? They got about we got about three, about three um, back and forth. Oh damn, I'm real, I'm real behind. I think yeah, Drake's got like three or four, and um, I don't know, Kendrick's got one, two, three. I don't know if you count uh, DJ Metro's. <laughs> oh Metro, oh Metro. Tell Metro to go play some, play some drums. All right, Miss Brown, we, that's all that's all we needed. Thanks, babe. I'm gonna call you back later. Okay, Thanks for filling in for me. Love you too. All right, <laughs> All right you, man. I don't, I, you, I, we got to get you tapped in. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So listen, we getting ready to get up out of here, Courtney. Um, but you know, before we get out of here, man, is it anything that you want to say to the people? How they can tap in with you? Where they can find you at? Like, yes. um, what? How can one go to the next level? But tapping in with you, what's your offer? Your services? Let us know. Phone so, number to reach you at. Uh, yeah, if you have I'm a phone a, number, we can text you on or anything. Let us know. I'm Tetris Concierge across the board. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Um, man, what is that number? Got a new business number. I, okay, right, cool. I, so we well, got. I looked that up. You got on your website, so people can go to your website. Tetris Concierge. Tetris Concierge com. Com. Shout out to Digital Brands Shout for that. Shout out to Digital Brands for the website. Uh, boy, so that's, that's tough. your branding is they can rent yours or rent ours. So yeah, so so rent yours or rent ours, yep. right? So so people can either rent their vehicle or they can rent y'all vehicles, right? Okay, yep. love that. Uh, so yeah, man, let's. You got a phone number or anything for them to tap in with you, or just go to the website. What do you prefer? Go to the website. Go to the website. Website's the easiest, and it's gonna give you can go which side of the business you need to go to. Okay. Phone number you're gonna have to talk it out. With website you'll. You'll figure it out first, and then we'll be able to reach out to you. Or you can reach out to us. There's a little chat bot there. Just hook it up. Um, okay. I got a, I got a, uh, I have a exotic car. I can tap in with Courtney, and you absolutely. can help me. Okay. Absolutely. How can you help me with my exotic car if I want to do something with my exotic car? Let's just say your parameters were a one. What I like to like, we I can get these cars. They ran out for. I drive a Maybach right now. What can you? How can you help me with my Maybach? You drive a Maybach, uh, we can get that out. We'll, we'll split some revenue. Okay. Target audience, we got that figured out. Revenue between twelve hundred to sixteen hundred a day. Okay. And uh, we're gonna keep them out. Like a part another part of our slogan or our motto is we keep them booking busy. Like we didn't, I didn't build these systems just to let this stuff sit. Like I build these systems to keep it moving, keep cars coming in, keep renters getting in them. Okay. Um, like I, I went from two to six cars in a weekend. Okay. Like that's when I knew my system was working. <laughs> oh, that's a fact. My system was working. So, yeah, you tap in with us. I come look at it, give you the rundown, joint ventures. That's basically all it is. It's going to come with us, keep the insurance on it, yada, yada, yada. This is what we're going to focus on. I target leads. I run paid ads. Like, we, I go to them. Okay. I ain't going to wait for them to come to us. So the plan is to get you enough money. To where you you paying it off or using it to get another one? What if what if uh, I give you my car? Somebody rents my car. They get in an accident. Does it fall on my insurance? No. So insurance, you keep. It works for three levels. We have the owner keep their level. Then we have fleet insurance, and then the renter picks up their insurances also. Uh, that's why we have a network of mechanics and a network of all the different people. One of them is mechanics. So. If it can't be fixed through the dollar and charged to the renter, and we have to make a claim, it's going to start with the renter's insurance. Then move to our fleet insurance. Owner's insurance is worst case scenario. Everybody's hands are tied. I'm sorry. And in, in my business, we still going to help you out with that. Like, well, if your premium goes up, we're going to help supplement that because that's just 
that's part of my guarantee. Like I'm not here to whatever fears you have, we alleviate, alleviate them and make you feel okay. more comfortable about them. Okay, so I want I prefer to go to like Turo or um, hire a car or something like that. Like what value? What's the difference between me going to them and oh, going man, to yeah. these concierge? Like you gonna do some work? Okay. You want passive income? That's the biggest thing. You want it to be passive, or you want to put in the work? Mm. With Toro, you're doing pickups, drop offs, cleanings, maintenance, whole nine yard. Um, with Toro, you're not vetting your leads. You can't no more. Everybody has to allow instant booking. So you're gonna take the hit on your reputation for canceling everybody. That's not the type of renter you want. Are you gonna take the hit on the car for letting everybody rent your car? With the other two. It's not the same thing, but it's you doing the work. With us, we pick up your car, we handle everything, you just collect weekly checks and get your or uh, monthly checks and monthly reports. We passive, we preach passive income because I'm just gonna go all to the goal, like to have passive income so I can like let's say my homeboy's a teacher. Mm. I wanna take like his grade in his school and supply all the teachers with the classroom they need to want to teach and get all the kids, all the supplies they need to want to learn. Not just the bare minimums, like your eight pack of crowns, like get these kids the 64 pack, uh, get them the good pencils, let's get them some mm. nice binders, some cool backpacks. Mm. Let's get the, the teachers classroom decorations and posters that they need so kids could be in a learning environment. So I just have this belief that like if a lot of teachers I know are just teachers because they got a degree and they couldn't find a better job. They hate it. Mm. And, and that, that reflects on the kids. A lot of kids, and also part of this is helping the, the parents, not just single parents, but like mm. parents in these inner neighborhoods where like they can't get the whole school supply list, you know? Mm. Not this chick. So we're gonna, that helps the parents. Um, while the kids are learning, I want the parents to be learning too to build their own passive income. That's why I got into it. And in my mind, if Kids are, if the teachers want to teach, and the kids want to learn, and the parents are learning the passive income, so now they can stay home. Both parents can stay home on the weekends, have more family time. It just alleviate a lot of stress on these parents that gets passed down to kids. Kids going to be bad, be bad to the, the teachers, and it's just a big circle. Mm -hmm. But I believe if, like, all that was alleviated with passive income, just think, passive income, uh, Parents can get their kids, they ain't got to give them the, the freshest clothes, but they can get them clothes that won't get them clowned, lower their self-esteem, you know, make them still want to go to school. Mm. I just think it is, if I could start that cycle, like other wealthy people be like, like, damn, like Tetris Concierge has got that school. They got every eighth graders school supplies, a couple weeks of clothes, and they got the teachers, everything they need for their classes. Like. And it's got to be tech. It's got to be. Tech. I'm not talking. I'm not talking like minimum stuff. Like they need iPads. If that's the thing that's helping kids learn these days, we're gonna get them iPads. Like that's that's why I need a. I need a lot of revenue coming in mm. to do that on a yearly basis because it's gonna start with just one school, one grade. Then one day it's gonna be the whole school. I just think there's enough wealthy people in the world mm. to where like we can fund these schools. We ain't gotta rely on the government mm. cutting this and cutting that. We as a people can help these schools like flourish and just be better environments for the teachers and the students, which will reflect at home. Then maybe we just reflect and bullying go down and that's kind of my vision. Mm. So like those are the kids, like these kids that like now I get I get made fun of every day I go to school. But guess what? It ain't gonna happen tomorrow. My dad ain't home and I know where his stash is. Like like that ain't gotta happen no more in, in my mind. Just be, I had fun in high school. Like, mm. But all my friends were nice to each other. We didn't let other people pick on, like bully anybody. Mm. Um, we just had that kind of good environment. We weren't rich and nothing. Everybody's mostly military parents. Mm. Still live our check to check, but we, there was some bullying, but I just think if we provided that for, for our kids and our teachers and our parents of these little kids, at least to a certain age, at least, Maybe at least kindergarten through fifth grade. Mm. Well, five years of learning how to create passive income. Mm. If both parents are doing it, but each parent's bringing an extra 3K a month, that's $6,000 a month that they don't have to work for. That's a nice summer vacation. 
That's a decent car to take your kids to school in. That's decent school clothes. That's good lunches. That's good after school lunches. That's mm-hmm. good programs for your, your kid need extra help. You can pay for a tutor. And it's teaching that financial literacy, which is what my wife's, her side of the family has a nonprofit that bridges the educational gap when it comes to business between the wealthy and the marginalized communities. So that we're just kind of building that up. So obviously it's gonna take a long time. So when I come to Atlanta to make moves, it's to save years to get to that goal. Like I said, I'm, I ain't gonna be able to have enough cars to do that at the level mm-hmm. I want. But if I can make if I can make a couple million a year and invest that couple million into something that's gonna make me lots more millions, and then finally get it cash flowing. Well, obviously we'll start one great way earlier, but now we do the whole school. Like Tetris Conscious takes care of all the middle schools, and then one day all the elementary and middle school, and one day all the high schools, and just like I don't think that. I don't think. I I just think it's too much parents on, a pressure on the parents, teachers, and the kids, especially when the root of all this is lack of money. And if it's not lack of money, then they got no time. And what does a kid do with no parents present? They just go home, watch TV, go outside, play with their friends. Like kids aren't designed to go home and study and learn all I can. They mm. they just trying to get out and it's. Partly for the school system set up. That's a, that's a whole other story. Mm. But I believe in knowledge, not not school systems. Mm. Um, but I think that would be easier to see if everybody just went so stressed. Man, these bad kids. And the kids come to school. Man, I hate Mr. Brown. I ain't listening. They get or they leaving to go to school. Their parents cussing them out. Hurry the f up. This could be better environments because parents stressed. They worked all day yesterday, came home, had to cook real quick, got just enough time for their kids to bed. They ain't checking no homework. Imagine if that parent got off at 4.30 or 3.30, didn't have to work no overtime, you know, mm. and get straight to work. We're like The kids asking their parents for help because they don't want to let the teacher down because they like the teacher because the teacher has a nice classroom that's putting in the work because they like to be there. I can talk about how it all intertwines in my head all day, but... Mm. The goal is to just help these kids a whole grade at a time. Like, not the poor kids get backpacks in this zip code. Like, no, like, kids, teachers, parents, and parents, while your kids are in school, here are these courses. Here's a dozen ways to make passive income. Even if you don't like the products, mm. just start it up, start the SOPs. Work your way. There's different levels of work for different stages of life. Like, hire you some college kids to do the, mm. the, the grunt work while they got the energy and time. Like, we shouldn't have old ass ladies and men working at McDonald's. Like, of course they're gonna move slow. They like they old, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, leave that to the whippersnappers. Uh, leave that to the whippersnappers. Yeah. Close McDonald's at ten o'clock and let them kids go home. <laughs> <laughs> like. Parents, oh, parents hold cooking more anyway because they make more money. They got no. more time. Like it's just the thing we're doing down this circle, this hole that can be changed if like everybody just a little bit more graceful and I don't want to say generous, but like providing, mm. like took a little bit more ownership of like our community. Mm. But that's that's the whole goal. That's why I do all this. Like you focus on impact because when you focus on impact, naturally. Income is just a byproduct of, of, of uh, impact. And yeah. that's interesting that you talked about the nonprofit and that collaboration with you, your wife handle, having that part um, down and you guys collaborating together and you just getting this revenue stream for you to be able to build your network and jump into the next thing. Because you know yeah. eventually you wanna be able to make money with just your mind, right? Not even the tangible products, but then you, exactly. get, you need this cash flow, you need that capital, you need the relationships. Like, I get it. In vehicles and cars and assets and products and watches and just you know, yes, bro. it's a lot of that is gonna get you in conversation in the right rooms and just a respect and and I get everything that you saying, man. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you do out here in the A. Bro, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, like when it starts popping off, like, like come on now, if you see me about to about to bless this this grade, <laughs> you gonna get in on it. You're like, man, that's dope. How come we ain't doing that? Let's let's see if he want to go half. 
Okay. Uh, if that's what it, if that's what all I'll we can do I'll with the time. I'll be ready to put bread up, bro. Right yeah, there. like listen, and listen, then it just grows. Some... Yeah, after that, it's me, you, and the whole circle of CEOs. Mm-hmm. Now we taking care of whole schools. Yeah. Now, now Houston sees it. All they yeah. little circles and entourages like we can do. This, let's do this down here. Then it's just popping off everywhere. Now, yeah. now Atlanta's taken care of. You move into neighboring cities, and it's just gonna grow. Mm-hmm. And then I really think like. When it gets crazy, everybody gonna look at the government and be like, "What the fuck? Why don't y'all doing this?" And they gonna start. And I think that's when, that's when our cycle of niceness and grace and all that in the world will start to turn over. Cause it ain't the route we going now. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't see like politicians running on points that are irrelevant to well being, like. Nobody gives a shit <laughs> with some of the shit they're talking about. Like, my kids got to walk home because I got to stay to work till 8 o'clock at night. And he stay 0.1 mile within the bus school range. Oh, and I don't have enough money to stay in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> it, like, it makes it me even more of a more prevalent of a reason of why, why should I know what's going on with the Drake and Kendrick beef when there's so much bigger things out there in the world. Like, it's just right. a distraction. Why, why, do I, why am I so intertwined with two grown men throwing rhythmic lyrics at each other <laughs> when, you know, I, I barely got a, enough to, to do this, like whether it's, it's having enough um, expendable income to be able to take my family on a vacation, whether yeah. it's not having uh, health insurance, whether it's not having, um, being able to go see a dentist once a year, like little things, so many other more important things. Yeah, I thought it'd be worried. Like we got an election coming up. Nobody's talking about that. Yeah, There's so a war going on right, right now. People yeah. stop talking about that. Stop, stop talking about that. But we yeah. will talk about the Kendrick and the Drake beef. Apparently for a long time. I didn't realize there were that many songs in. <laughs> like, now I'm a little embarrassed. I thought it was just two rounds or whatever. No, man, you good. You good. <laughs> but, but listen, uh, man, we, we've been chopping up for a minute. We actually finna get ready to conclude this episode, yeah. Courtney. Appreciate uh, you. Let me put that man, goal out listen. there. listen. Somebody hears it, maybe they'll start it before me. Uh, Listen, no, what, this right here, they're gonna start it with you. They're gonna reach out to you and say, "I want to, want to be a part with this guy right here." Let's do it. And uh, I'm dead serious. Man, I bought a guy out Taco Bell in the airport the other day just because he asked me. Like, you ain't you ain't gotta wait. So if you tapping in, if y'all tapping in, just hit me up. Right. I will help you give back, even if we just go hand out a six pack of Gatorades on a summer day. Like, we should do an event at the warehouse, man, for the kids. Have an event and give them Gatorade, have people come up, pull up. Yep, absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Well, man, listen, this was a, another dope episode of the Digital Brands Podcast, man. We had Courtney come through and flame the podcast, man. We appreciate you pulling up, coming Anytime. all the way from San Antonio down here to the A, man. Shout out to you and Tetris Concierge. Shout out to my sponsors. We got Start Loving Black People, man. Y'all make sure y'all, y'all go check them out. Cool They're sponsoring the episode today. And then, of course, we got Class A 1111, continuous sponsors, man. One of the top tequilas in the world. Y'all make sure y'all tap in with them, too. So, man, listen, see y'all at the top. We're going to see y'all at the top. We're going to see y'all from the top. Let's get it. We out.